Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Dark Art Society Podcast. I'm your host, Chet Czar, and it is May 8th, 2023. I did it. I remembered to announce the date. Uh, I'm interviewing um, Skinner in a few minutes here. The return of Skinner. He's been on the show uh, uh, way back, I think, when Mike was co-host. So it's been a long time. It's been a few years. And uh, what the hell was that? My computer just made a weird noise. Um, so I'm excited to have him on. He's got a bunch of cool projects happening, and and uh, I'm really interested to hear what he's been up to because he's been up to a lot. Um, great dude, great artist, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, that's coming up. Okay, what's going on with me? Just working on my commissions. You know, everybody knows that listens to the show. I took a year off of solo show so I could get these commissions done so i can move on with my life and start um developing dystopia and and all kinds of other things i want to do and uh that's going well i've got this one almost done i've got two more that are just like this 11 by 14 ovals that i'm about to start and that's pretty much it just still uh, uh painting commissions and taking care of stuff i owe people if you want to see the progress on all this stuff like everything i'm doing you can go to my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash Chet Czar. Um, that, that really, if there's, if you want to support me and you, you don't, can't afford my artwork, uh, Patreon's a great way because you can join for just a buck and, uh, it helps every little bit helps. And, um, uh, it's actually really helpful to have a steady income coming in that way. It's been, been a huge help to me. Um, patreon.com slash Chet Czar. Anyway, I post all my stuff on there. I post all my paintings everything i'm working on every day i take pictures and post them i do time lapses tutorials all kinds of stuff it's really you'll be surprised if you if you um have never if you've been a fan of my work and you haven't seen my patreon you'll be surprised at all the new work that's on there. there's like you know five or six years of work you may not have seen um anyway uh also if you want to support this podcast you can go to patreon.com slash dark art society um, and you could join there for as little as a dollar a month. And this is uh, all member supported. Except we do have a little bit of help from the skull shop. S-K-U-L-L-S-H-O-P-P-E dot com. Here's one of their skulls without the jaw. Still, the jaw's around here. It's, uh, it, I promise you, the jaw's around here. Um... They make great skulls, and they have, they offer a twenty uh, percent, I think, twenty percent discount for people who join at the five dollar and above level, on the on the Patreon, uh, on the Dark Art Society Patreon. So check them out, join the Patreon at the five dollar level, get your twenty percent discount code. Their skulls are super realistic. I've got real skulls, and you can't tell the difference when they're sitting side by side. I mean, it's really amazing the quality. Um, I wanted to mention uh, some sad news. I don't know if you know Bill Basso. Uh, he's a friend of mine. He's an artist, dark artist, really great artist. He's one of the few effects guys I uh, know or knew now um, that that left makeup effects to become a fine artist. And uh, he was doing great stuff. He showed at Copper a lot. We showed a lot together. And apparently he just died at age 60 of a heart attack or heart failure. Isn't that the same thing? Heart attack, heart failure. It's just shocking, shocking. He was a really nice guy. He's one of these guys that everybody loved too. He's he's universally loved guy, known for being very nice. I tried to get him on the podcast numerous times, but he wouldn't come on. He was just too shy. Uh, he had, uh, he just was, you know, it felt felt kind of uh, shy about about talking. He was a shy guy, but so talented, and it's really a, a huge loss to the community. So, rest in peace, Bill. Um, we're all sad to see you go. Uh, okay. Other than that, is there anything else? Yeah, no new subscribers this week, so I can't read your name. If you subscribe to the the Dark Art Society Patreon, you get your name read on the show as well. Um. I guess that's it. That's enough rambling. Let's get on with it. The Skinner episode. Re the return of Skinner. It's going to be great. All right. Thanks for listening. And here we go. Oh, and don't forget to like and subscribe.
Hello, Skinner. <laughs> oh, hello, friend. Hello, Chet. I love you. I'm, I, I'm, I love you too. I I uh, I was thinking before this, like I was like running around doing shit and doing a lot of like tedious things, and I was like, oh, I'm just so glad. Like I was just like I hold you in my mind. I think. At least, at least you're out there. At least you're <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm like, you know, like when I'm just like, dude, at least I like, I feel crazy a lot yeah. because I'm like, I just, you know, so it feels really nice to have like somebody who, who's like, oh yeah, no, man, it, it's true. Like all this, this is all bullshit, man. <laughs> all bullshit, I, you know? I, I appreciate that. And I feel the same way about you. It's like, you know, when you see people, uh, talking about things um that you also care about that you're concerned about it makes you feel less crazy even with like music i remember I, you know i remember going through some really difficult times with my job and hearing certain songs that just expressed how i was feeling and i was just like oh my god it makes me feel like i'm not alone in this and, you know because mm -hmm. that's like the worst feeling you can have um especially with in all this bullshit but i'm but uh i i really i appreciate it. that's really nice of you to say but i and i honestly feel the same way about you it's like you're doing the you're doing the good you're doing god's work you're doing i also god's feel work. like a very obnoxious person though i'm always like like you know like i'm just really like i don't give a fuck i'm, I'm just like yelling about shit I'm like ah, it's hilarious you're 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 uh you're um your stories or whatever they're called are just or uh reels reels uh they're legendary they're so funny they always make oh, me okay. laugh they're so great every i i mean people send them to me it's like oh, your stuff really? gets yeah yeah your stuff gets sent to me and i send it to other people it's like <laughs> everybody loves those reels man they're so funny that's cool i haven't i haven't done many and i haven't done too much in a while i feel like there was like yeah, you're doing them a lot for a while there. They were great. Yeah, I feel like I don't know what happened. It was like I just felt like I was spending a a lot of time and energy. Um, I'm like, okay, so we're all sort of begrudgingly connected to these, you know, technological apparatuses that like are really just like we're the product. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, you know, I'm gonna try to make things nicer, I guess. <laughs> and funnier and fun and more fun but then like after a while i was like i feel like i can't tell what i'm doing here really like uh am i is my brain being trained to create content for this platform so that people will pay attention to it more and like it i'm yeah, like regardless of like what my intention is what's the actual broader effect of it i know it's like you can't win you just you can't <laughs> <I know>. win <laughs> that's the bottom line. i know and i'm like and i'm just like i just sit there you know and i use these uh you know like the internet and instagram or or twitter or whatever and i'm just like i just daydream that like a lightning bolt will just disintegrate mark zuckerberg or like, <laughs> you, know, you know i'm just like dude why can't anything bad happen to them like why i know they, i know it's so, such a pisser like, but um but like yeah i mean i i think um also that you know what i realized too is that the the sort of the subtle so almost unconscious programming that we experience by like what we do uh what we listen to what we take in like how we interact with the world and all this stuff is like my i realized like oh i'm kind of addicted to feeling validated by people mm. thinking I'm fun or funny or something right. and you now it's nice but it's also like well what's that doing to me like and also it's just like any other addiction like is it um it, it is it sort of substituting something that i'm neglecting about myself that i'm not like i'm fine nothing like i don't need to be I don't need to be funny online to feel valid or okay right. or have to do anything. And so like, I think um, like in the last eight, 
nine months, I just basically was like, I'm going to spend all my money on um, just trauma therapy and EMDR. And I'm going to go to 12 step meetings constantly. And I'm going to like do it. So that's like oh, wow. what I'm doing. And I think that like, in a way, what's, MD, uh, what's MDR? EMDR, EMDR is the eye movement, the eye movement um, stuff where. Oh they yeah. Use... Yeah. 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 I know someone is doing that. Yeah. So I've been doing that, but like, yeah, I mean, I go to my, I go to like, let's see, I go to like a 12 step program, like three or four times a week and then therapy three times a week, different kinds. And I do a bunch of like physical exercise stuff to like move my brain around and shit. And then I, you know, other than that, I'm like making art and drawing and writing and stuff. But like, I kind of, I kind of had this turning point where like, basically, I feel like I lived so much of my life in denial and avoidance of like how I really feel. And the fact that like, I truly don't really know like who I am, you mm. know, in a lot of ways, I know the things I like and whatever, but oh, I realized that, uh, trauma had played such a significant role in my life, but I had never really been like diagnosed really. It was mm. just that I was like, thinking about suicide all the time and like wishing a bus would hit me or like, right. like thinking about dark, terrible things or like how, how like I don't matter, nothing matters, but not in the fun Buddhist way right. in the in sort the of depression like, way. Yes. And, um, and then like, you talk to people, <laughs> you talk to doctors and shit and it's their job to like, you know, diagnose you and see what's going on with you and stuff. And they're like, Oh yeah, this is what's going on. Like, sounds like you have this and this, and this is a complex you know, PTSD. And like, like, and then they just ask you a lot of questions mm -hmm. about like your life coming up and you're like, yeah. And you realize very quickly that you're not as like special or unique in your suffering as you thought you were really. Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that like, you're actually just like a list of variables that determine an outcome. And, that, <laughs> and like, you're like, oh. <laughs> pile it on. Oh man, you tell me I'm not God's special cookie that he baked, you know, like, oh man. You know, so, so um, yeah. And then realizing that, and then realizing that, the real source of the suffering was like a, a chronic disconnection from yeah. myself from people yeah. I love from feeling good or like, I don't know, just um, like pain is the thing that pulls us out of our being present and um, gra grateful and stuff like that. And uh, it's interesting that I never really considered myself to be like a spiritual person in my life ever oh really no hmm. like never like i was always like i always thought of you as kind of spiritual even even though i've never talked to you about that i just always kind of assumed yeah for some reason i just had a feeling about you i don't know it's weird yeah well the thing is that's interesting is i've come to understand that i am kind of a spiritual person but like in a very uh, you know, in kind of a parallel way, I mm -hmm. guess where I've kind of come to understand, um, spirituality through like the stuff, just through pain, mm -hmm. just, just pain and suffering like that to me is like where I get all my, um, spirituality because to me, I guess, you know, like I would read books constantly like uh, Ram Dass and Jack Cornfield and mm. shit like that, you know, and I'd be like, OK. For the duration of the time I was reading the book, I'd be like, OK, I get it, like patience, reserving judgment, kindness, love, like understanding that other people are suffering, give them the benefit of the doubt, whatever. I read the book and then <laughs> I'd be like back into my depression and shit. So mm. it would like only last for the amount of time that i was you know experiencing the the literature or the message or whatever right and then i was like damn nothing's working and and then you realize like oh it's actually like a long-term life practice it's about like um prioritizing connection prioritizing the expansion of your consciousness which means challenging all the things about yourself that you 
think are who you are that are unconscious beliefs, mm -hmm. like compulsive beliefs. Mm -hmm. And then, and then stepping away from your belief systems and being like, now, which of these belief systems and what part of these systems are keeping me separate mm -hmm. from myself and others. And like that all for me comes from challenging the patterns and behaviors that I developed in, in my pain and my neglect and, and trauma as like a child. Hmm. Yeah. And so, you know, so it's like, I don't know, it's all, you know, it's all like, sounds very conceptual <laughs> and theoretical. I, it doesn't, not to me, I get it. Right. Until you're in a position where you realize that like you've been walking around, um, as like a emotionally amputated person yeah and you 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 go wait I, I like i think it was like eight or nine months ago my like my my wife she was just like i could tell that like my depression like even if i wasn't actively like um being like you know i fucking wish a bus would hit me or whatever right. you know it's, it's just how i carry myself like the energy is bad mm. you know and um, I could just tell it was like, it, it, she'd had a, it, it was just, it, I, like, I was like, this is like fucking this other person up, All right. you know? And, and um, the other thing is, is that the behaviors and, and compulsive pulls and everything and avoidance and uh, control and, uh, denial and everything, like all these things that I had developed as a child for like survival techniques mm -hmm. were now like ruining my life. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's the way I it goes. Have... That's what usually <laughs> so, happens. I, yeah, <laughs> like exactly. We, we need so, those like, things to survive yeah. as kids. Otherwise we'd go insane. And then you, then you, you're not in that situation anymore. And you still have all the, those things are just ingrained because you were learning them by example, when you were super impressionable, it's so fucked up. Yeah. You don't even have a choice. And yeah. your parents, they, they make you like an extension of their suffering and their needs. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I, so I was like, all right, let me, uh, let me hit rock bottom real quick and fucking <laughs> and, and then, like figure this out. And then I realized, you know, through this basic, you know, like, ultra humbling experience of being like i can't duct tape this psychic wound and this wounding together anymore and pretend like i'm okay mm. i can't i'm fucked you know and so uh yeah i mean i realize like oh sh shame is a core belief system for me like mm -hmm. i feel like everything is sort of if it's going wrong, then it's, I, I, I'm connected to it yeah. and, and everything. But like, so it's like growing up, you know, you feel shame because you don't have anybody who has the emotional maturity and the care to tell you that, you know, their suffering and their problems are not your fault. Mm -hmm. Actually. Right. And you shouldn't know about them. Really? This isn't for you. You're yeah. supposed to um and then you kind of go okay i'm internalizing the shame now i'm hiding because who i really am is a sh shameful thing right and so but i desperately need love so i'm gonna overcompensate in some other way and then create this like overachieving kind of personality while i'm hiding inside of it so that i can sort of garner validation and love and connection even though it's like this total farce of love and connection right but it's so it's you know uh it's so resourceful though too in a way you know mm. it really is like uh, uh it's I genius. yeah it's crazy. yeah i i mean i remember because i went to therapy in the early 90s like a long time ago and it was it was total total lifesaver for me and and it was only because my um my trauma was manifesting as OCD and it was 
fucking my relationship up. And it was like, you know, I, I don't think I would have, if I didn't have something that important to me to lose, I don't think I could have done it on my own. I don't, th I don't think I would have done it. I don't think if I was like just single, I just would have, I just would have kept feeding that thing and yeah, totally, you know, just I, dealing with it. But it was like, I had something that I valued more than that, which was <clears throat> my wife. And so, yeah, I, uh, I, once I got it, I got in, I got in there and I was like, uh yeah i had a normal childhood <laughs> and then it was like it took a long time too it took like i don't know months maybe a year i don't know it's to, to the point where it's like you, you know how they do is like they they get you to say things they get you to tell them you know what you went through or whatever and and then finally it clicks oh my god that was not a normal childhood that was completely fucked up that was traumatic it was terrifying and now that you know i've got um, it's easier now to see that cause I have granddaughters now. Um, and, oh, yeah. and so it's like, or even with my, my, uh, kid, it's like seeing him, th imagining him going through what I went through at his age just makes you go, Oh my God, I would mm -hmm. never let something like that happen to him. And the, the horror, the idea is so horrifying when you see it, but you think, you know, you lived it and it was like, yeah, it was just the way it was. It was no big deal. And it, and I just remember, I remember the moment that I realized in therapy, it's like my whole world just completely flipped upside down and it was just, just shocking. I was like, oh my God, I can't believe it. It's, you know, I had no idea. I was so like in denial about it. It was like, damn. You know, what's so interesting is the, being able to kind of like slowly split your consciousness off into this place where you like can kind of see the way you've been operating as like a person that deserves a lot of compassion that had no idea that it could be different. Mm -hmm. It was just sort of like, doing their best because they didn't know you know right. it's like I, I never really have had any compassion for myself like i've always just been like you're a piece of shit you're not working hard enough you're mm -hmm. not generating enough love and understanding and and you're not uh, achieving enough and you're not doing enough you know ever right. ever <laughs> which for, from an outside perspective anybody would be like that's insane <laughs> because it's funny because I, you know, just in the, in the intro, I recorded the intro before and, um, I recorded it twice cause I messed up on one. So I don't know if it's in, if it's in the one that I'm going to use, but I said, he's got all these projects going on. He's really, <laughs> he's always doing all this cool stuff. So to, it's funny to hear you saying like, you feel like you're not doing enough when you're doing so much more than 99% of the art. Well now out there. Yeah. I think now though, the thing is like, I feel like um, that kind of, I mean, it's, it's really sad to like actually reflect on, but the fact is, is that the, the like hidden neglected part of myself that grew up feeling deeply unlovable because of how I interpreted my impact on my family, mm -hmm. my mom, my dad, and, and like, you know, everybody seemed extremely burdened by, um, by me being there. And so I got deep into people pleasing and stuff. And yeah. then like, so I, I, I like really hid like what my needs were, who I was, I, what I wanted, how I wanted to feel special mm -hmm. and like, loved and all this stuff as a child and uh so creating this sort of like overachiever um version of myself that i was like okay i will become a lovable version of what i think a worthy person would appear as right. and so i was like the best at sports. I got straight A's. I mean, I also got into like doing tons of drugs, but it was like, well, I got straight A's. I mean, every, <laughs> everything I did kind of undermined a lot of uh, institutions too, because I'm like, if a kid can get straight A's, 
and be like super high on acid and drugs all the time. Like maybe, maybe like that's not that good or I don't know. But anyway, so, or maybe acid helps. I'm not yeah. sure. Anyway, so I, I, um, so I created this sort of like version of myself, but the problem was, was that like the self neglect eroded any, it, it was like, I was overachieving, but I hated myself so deeply and I felt so empty and depressed which I was like, okay, overachieving is not working. I need to work harder because that's the only way that I can get acceptance, connection and love or, or like, or like right. be seen. But that construction that I had created to survive was never going to be sustainable. Right. So in the last like eight, nine months is like, you know, here I am, I'm 45 now, I think. So I'm like, okay, let's figure out what's underneath all this like overachiever bullshit fucking, you know, stuff or whatever. And it turns out it's just like a little kid that's just like, oh, can I have a like fucking ice cream or something, man? I just want to chill. Like, can I relax? <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's like, and it's like, it's like, oh, okay, cool. Like you like Ghostbusters and you just like want to like fucking eat cake and stuff and like, <laughs> like eat comic or whatever, you know? And so like, what's funny is now I'm not trying to do any overachiever shit. I'm trying to do things that I genuinely feel connected to. Cool. And so when I'm genuinely connected to the stories I'm telling, the art that I'm creating, like all this stuff is deeply autobiographical now mm. in a way of like, where I'm like, okay, let me figure out like, I mean, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of like uh, the way that I've been subconsciously communicating with myself totally man it's like you're there was a deep part of yourself that was like trying to trying to tell you yes like dude this ain't <laughs> it and so um like i'm i'm you know in in the movie that we're making shrine of abominations i'm realizing that like it's like deeply about trauma mm. <laughs> the film yeah it's about unpredictability it's about loss of control it's about loss of uh innocence it's about um destruction it's about not having agency over our environments it's uh about anger justice it's like all these different things and i'm like i didn't even realize that those things were popping up and i'm noticing now that there's like in the way that my storytelling and skin crawl and stuff is coming out is like deeply about being understood and accepted and also like revenge against parents <laughs> that are terrible, which is always fun. But uh, yeah, I think like, I'm I mean, just re realizing like more and more that like, I don't have to prove shit, yeah, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, all those things that you mentioned too, are it's like, that's what dark art painting monsters. It's, you know, that's at the root of that really all the dark art and the monster stuff and the creepy stuff that we have been doing. And we like it's, it's, it's that, uh, you know, it's all of the things you mentioned, you know what I mean? So I, I feel like that's what maybe part of what attracted us to it. You know, when we were young, it's like archetypes mm -hmm. of, parts of ourselves like isolation or mi being misunderstood or like i think for, for me oh go, go ahead no no i was just gonna say feeling ugly feeling like a monster feeling unlovable yeah. all those things you know also like when i was growing up i was uh pulled deeply pulled into mythology hmm. where i would read all these books and i was like totally fascinated by how freaking weird the gods were like with their yeah. like their personalities and like shit they did and like they were all super flawed and stuff yeah. and like and i was like i noticed that i was trying to understand what was going to happen to me hmm. by reading the, these books wow because i didn't have any control or any ability to uh like 
really know the truth about my parents, mm -hmm. you know, like I'd seen my dad be drunk and violent oh. and, and crazy and, uh, gluttonous and try to get, you know, try to be like a womanizer and shit. So I would like, look up a character like, Oh, who's like that? Really? Yeah. In this book. And it'd be like, Oh, Thor or Hercules. Was it like consciously like, you were doing it or was it, did you yeah, just, I was like, I was like really wow. like, I mean, I was in the fourth grade or something and I was like looking through this shit and I'm like, okay, so this is like how this character. Oh my like, God. What, what a trip. This? Like, does he end up being good? Does he stay? Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's intense, <laughs> man. Yeah. And I was like, uh, just deeply so trying to sad too really sad yeah i can feel the sadness in me yeah wow <laughs> but like uh i think that i also was so crushed by the banal but the banal nature of like my life too i was like this this ha there has to be something else it can't be this it cannot be this hmm. that I just sit here and like wait for these weirdos to like act strange. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that is, that's, you know, feeling like an alien too, like feeling like you don't belong here. You know, everyone's crazy. The, you know, the worst for me, for me, that the, the thing that was so bad was accepting it as normal, like thinking it was, you know, not even like, I never thought it was, I, I didn't have the, the foresight or, or I don't know the, the, uh, I don't know, intelligence <laughs> to, to think, to stop and go and think, if think about it in that way, like that anything was even wrong. It was mm -hmm. just like, you know, and, and it was, you know, it was like, I grew up in the seventies and it's like, everybody's parents were divorced everybody it was like if you had i was thinking about this the other day if you know on my street it's like if friends of mine whose parents were together they were like the oddballs that was it was unusual it was weird like they stood stood out like a sore thumb because everybody's parents were divorced and then well, we were all latchkey like, kids if somebody had a dad it was very weird yeah it was like, it was like what does he like take you fishing? Yeah, what right. Like, what's that like? <laughs> yeah. I, I remember that. Yeah. I was a latchkey kid too. And I remember really enjoying being a latchkey kid because it was sort of like, Oh, okay. Other kids that are sort of, we're all kind of in purgatory together. Mm -hmm. Like this is good. This is cool. <laughs> Well, I, I mean, there was that freedom. There was the freedom where it's like you could go home and watch your cartoons or whatever TV shows and grab a bag of chips and draw or whatever, and nobody was there to bug you. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> I remember there's like kids that, because I would draw, you know, my little Godzillas and sharks and monsters and shit. And uh, I remember, what was it? Um, these kids were sitting at a table and they were all drawing. One of them had an X-Men comic and I had never seen that shit ever. I was like, what is that? What is this? And they were older kids, you know, like two years older than me, I think fifth grade or something. And they were drawing all the, like mech mechs and all this robo tech shit. And I was like, why the fuck is all this? This is a thing, you know. I was like, oh my god, and like, and then I remember I just sat down immediately and was like, okay, I'm gonna draw a helicopter. It's gonna blow their minds, you know. <laughs> like, and I draw like Airwolf and shit. They'd be like, oh, that's pretty cool. Like, I was like, oh, they like my Airwolf. Yeah, this, yeah. This is so cool. And then, um, yeah and then like the years would go on i was like oh and then they were those kids were kind of like gone mm -hmm. and i was like oh like, there's where's all the art there's no art kids yeah here. yeah I, and, that uh, happened to a lot of kids i knew it's like we used to draw together and then when the, i guess maybe probably puberty or something they went they just people became like idiots man it's so weird <laughs> i remember thinking we were kind of cool 
we were sort of smart. We were doing cool shit. And then, you know, we lost touch. And then I'd see them uh, years later in high school. And they were just like, you know, beer drinking, truck driving, partying, knuckleheads, like dumb. And I was like, man, I remember that guy used to be really, I used to think he was smart and had like a really different sense of humor. And now I'm seeing him and he's just like a dumbass. It was so weird. It was like, I think these people were, were, uh, like it, it, and I remember seeing there's a one guy I'm thinking in particular he had just like this kind of deadness in his eyes and he was like hey I'm like Mr. Fun and I was oh. like and he just seemed like a dummy and uh and, yeah. and and it made me think you know look as I became an adult went through therapy and learned about that stuff it's like I'm sure because I know his dad was an alcoholic I'm sure it was that weird kind of denial to where he's just kind of his real self was when we were little, I could see that, which is smart, creative, kind of funny and clever. And then, and then it's just like, he lost his soul when he got older. And I'm sure it was from the trauma of growing up with a, an alcoholic. It's like, wow. they were all, there's so many alcoholics in the town. I grew up it was crazy alcoholic parents. Yeah. It's like, it's really interesting uh when you grow up and you see like how the sort of like the social uh civilization experiment like takes place in people's lives like how we're all sort of casualties of that algorithm or whatever but like seeing kids who are it's like we're all we're all growing up and we're like oh you don't have cool brand name shoes and then we're all like mean to each other over these extremely programmed totally right. empty, rapid things and then you find out later like oh yeah that that kid was like lived in a home with the, there was like termites on the, or like right. cockroaches on the ground and had like no money and was like molested or something right. and then oh but we were just like roasting them because they didn't have jordans or yeah something. yeah it's like yeah. It's, terrible, it's really it's terrible well, it's like a microcosm of, you know, what we do to each other. As yeah, adults. yeah, yeah. And you see, like, I think that, um, what was I listening to the other day? This There's this guy who talks about adult, adult development, and he talks about how people's brains are hardwired to survive. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times that means, uh, you know, ingratiating themselves into systems, beliefs, and thoughts, because the idea of, of being outside of those, those, that kind of like tribal instinct yeah. is I, right. And so the, the compulsion to survive is so strong that, you know, your cool, fun, Bernie Sanders loving mom now thinks that it's fine that abortion is illegal. Right. And so it's because they they are just trying to survive like the small social situation that they have right then you you know it's like okay and then and then we spend all of our time trying to figure out how to be compassionate for these motherfuckers <laughs> <laughs> yeah they make it so hard <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's so funny you know it's like so crazy is like you know like watching people's um ability to hold information diminish over time mm -hmm. because the ability to hold nuance and 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 understand that chaos is the thing that it, it and that stuff ends is the only thing that you can depend on is is like nobody can do it really gracefully and that everybody's so preoccupied with like how exhaustive it is to exist in a world like this that people are just like, wait, you want me to hold nuance, motherfucker? Are you serious? Uh, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I'm yeah. just like, yeah, I wish you could. <laughs> at, least, at least during Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's it... <laughs> You're like, I thought this was going to be fun. <laughs> now, I remember last time. I remember last time you were on. It was definitely more serious. I'm going to catch this fly. Hold on one second. Oh, I got it. Hold on one second. Okay. Hell yeah. Lucifer, you're going outside. <laughs> Lucifer. <laughs> oh, that's my fly, Lucifer. 
Asmodeus. Let's see. Okay, okay, Asmodel. Let's you, see. What's I it? hope you kept oh, talking. Jublex. I'm not cutting that. That's my fly, Jublex. Well, I was sitting here trying to like trying to think of all the cool demon names. Wait, I, last time last time we talked, I was all serious. Oh no, it was a lot more serious. I remember it was because I hadn't talked to you like I hadn't really talked to you much like had a big big conversation with you and i remember it being more serious than i expected it to be oh wow yeah Damn. and I, it's like i don't even remember what we talked about to be honest because i've done so I, like all, i was all like i was all like you don't understand <laughs> being an artist is it's big time work it's big work that's why you know what that's why I, uh sometimes like i know this is a very unpopular opinion but like uh you know nick cave mm-hmm I like Nick Cave's music and his art stuff. Like I like it, but listening to him talk is terrible. I don't know if it's I've like, ever heard him talk. It's pretentious as hell. Oh, really? But like, I know that's an uncommon, uh, uh, probably. Un I have a lot of unpopular opinions or whatever. But it's like, <laughs> it's like making making music's like really bloody deep work. It's you know, it's just like, all right, like I. Get, I guess like I don't like it, it like he, but like when you explain it to somebody like they couldn't understand what you're talking about yeah. really I'm just like I don't know what this means man what do you mean like <laughs> but anyway but um yeah I, I I bet sometimes I do get I think I do get serious if I'm like I don't know like I think like you know we all go through different kinds of phases and shit but like i think that like i fully don't believe in my own bullshit anymore so it's easier to laugh and stuff so yeah I <laughs> well i mean you, you've got you know your 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 online persona is is like you, you know like those videos you're just cracking up you're cracking up the whole time that's just part of what's so funny you're like laughing. well i can't believe i'm talking into a fucking phone man <laughs> the fuck is this <laughs> like dude like i'm like trying to say something and i can't stop laughing because i know how like dumb i am like that i'm doing this right. you know? like what an idiot like okay <laughs> it's so funny though uh but no i appreciate it. i appreciate you know uh i'd rather have a serious talk than a than a uh you know surface level bullshit chit chat yeah. thing you know i like the deep shit it's like hard sometimes like for me like I, I feel like uh talking to artists um musicians and stuff sometimes like i feel like they're very preoccupied with the role of an artist or a musician or something and i'm just like man we're just people man yeah yeah we're your ass people like i just want to talk to a person like that's it I yeah don't about, i don't care about this shit man. yeah yeah i've never been into that i've never been into that attitude it just annoys the shit out of me like that how do what do you how can i make my branding better or something? <laughs> i don't know how to fuck that what that is you know, talk into your phone and laugh i guess I don't know. <laughs> it's the you know it's the the capital well, late stage this... late stage capitalist nightmare everything's this everything's name? a brand you know it's all reduced down to yeah, money brand. what does that even mean like a brand it's like it, it, i mean you have a brand you have a brand yeah, but what is it it's a you know it's like you're what is a brand? <laughs> it's a guy like who kind of your style. Online. It's like your style. It's your presentation. There's like a vibe around your personality and how you present wow. your work and stuff. That's the way I see it. And it's like, right. you know, it's just, it's just the idea. It's just so gross. The idea that everything has to be um, uh, related to money. It's like everything. It's just hyper focused on money, and it's like it, ha you, it you you sort of have to be to survive, which is even more gross. You know, it's like it's like money yeah. is important, and it sucks. I hate that it's important because that's like I, you know, because I'm always I never have enough money. I'm always struggling with money. It's like it's just I've had periods where I've had money, but you know, it's all I, it always you know eventually I have no money, and it's like. I, I I came to realize that you know I don't I just do not I don't give a shit about money like I it's like 
Yeah. But it's, but I'm thinking about it all the time because I need it because I got to pay these bills. And there's another fucking fly in here. <laughs> Unless I yeah, didn't get that. Maybe I didn't get that one. Um, but, but you know what, you know what, it, you know what it is, is that like you instinctually know that it doesn't matter. Yeah. I, I in, in, in this way that you're being told that it matters. Right. But I mean, it, it's like it, yeah, the way everything's set up, it's, it's set up to where you have to have it, you know, you have to have money. And, and, and the thing is like, I, um, I, I, I feel like, um, uh, I came to realize that, that I just don't, I'm, I don't care about money. Cause it's like, what I'll do is I'll, I'll earn a bunch of money when I need it. And I don't want to have to do that. I just want it always to be there. I'm happy to pay these motherfuckers off when, you know, these scumbags that run everything, <laughs> I'll give you your fucking money. Just leave me alone. Yeah. You know, I'll do, I'll play the game, but it's like the money, it's not like there's always the money there. And, um, what happens is, so I'll, I'll bust my ass, earn a bunch of money to pay the bills or whatever it is the whatever I need the money for. And then once I have the money, it's not like, I'm like, yeah, I got to get more. I got to get more. It's like, I'm like, okay, I got that stuff paid. Let me get back to what's important to me, which is, you know, this paintings or this artwork or some creative thing. It's, it's like, I think people that are really into money, like the people that, that we're paying to <laughs> our money to are people mm -hmm. that like really love money. Like, that's their art. That's their thing that they love. That's the thing that they have to do. It's like, you know, if they, if they, uh, don't get a deal on something, if they don't get the best deal, it bothers them. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, I don't fucking give a fuck, man. I don't care if I, get, I don't care if I get totally the worst deal ever on something I'm buying. <laughs> if I have the money, I just don't give a shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm care. with you. Yeah. I, and I hate that. I have to care about it. You know, it just sucks. It's so, yeah, I'm it with you. I think sucks. I think that you just know that there's like it's ba it's basically like the cornerstone of the situation in which we e experience life. So it's like I know that it's possible in my mind that we do a different thing and that all it requires is imagination and care. Mm -hmm. And that, and then all of a sudden our lives would be better because that's all it takes is imagination and intention mm -hmm. to make things better. Right. And, and, uh, I think, yeah, that's the thing is that like the, like money to me is like the cold, hard example of our lack of imagination. And I do know that there is a, a necessity with, resource exchange mm -hmm. right yeah so like you know say because because ultimately i feel like we're all totally responsible for the material reality of like our existence like as far as it goes with like surviving you that mean like means, are, do you mean are you talking on like on cosmic levels or are you talking about no i'm talking like levels? like this like like okay a farmer has to get up and be uncomfortable to get to go farm right mm -hmm. they don't they don't want to get up at six mm -hmm. but that's how that's the discomfort that they experience which is sort of like the example of them being responsible for their life right right so so i understand that there's a part of my life that's uncomfortable based on the idea the necessity of farming like i'm like when i when i do shit that i'm uncomfortable doing i go uh, this is me getting up at the crack of dawn to like tend the crops right. or whatever. I get, I get, I get that there's a part of this. Mm -hmm. I understand it, but it's when that doesn't end and then you never see the crops and you never get the money, you know, it's right. just like, like that's, that's where you understand that the resource exchange is inequitable and that like your time and energy is worth more. And then you get to decide collectively, like, should we strike? Should we do this? Should I not, should I not get a job that I don't like? And you know what I mean? It's like, we all have to make those decisions. I just think that like the idea is if you don't care about a system that pretty much 
is is guaranteeing that the world's gonna end <laughs> like, if you don't care about it that you're seen as like an asshole or a fucking hippie deadbeat that needs to get a job it's like nah dude fuck you dude <laughs> you know and so i i get i get all this stuff like you know what we should do or whatever but the fact of the matter is when you know as far as our quality of life goes when the cost of a hamburger goes up, you know, that they say that's because like, I don't know, some like the wages increased or something, but it's like, well, if the cost of the burger goes down, does, does the wages go of the worker go up? Like, I don't right. like, there's no, like there's no real, there's no real, um, uh, honesty going on with the way that we interact with money with, mm-hmm. with, um, Oh yeah. And, and t- time and energy or anything. It's, it's all like disingenuous. So I don't know. It's like, so as an artist, it's extra hard because you're trying to carve out time and energy and space to ex- exist in a creative way in a place that kind of dehumanizes and, and minimizes like how important what you do is right. like e- every turn. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, like the AI stuff to me is really funny because it's very much like just another example of um, how we collectively don't like the fact that they're trying to use AI to replace like, I don't know, the, the labor of artists or the, the contribution of artists in, in our culture before they'd be like, Oh, now we don't have, we need a, military anymore or whatever you know it's just like it's right. immediately immediately right. the arts like yeah let's just get rid of these fucking bohemian scumbags like let's get rid of them dude they're annoying like they're always posting online and shit like fucking. you know it's funny is i tried the other day um uh uh um to chat with ai with with uh i don't know the bing version uh-huh. Bing AI, I don't know. Um, Hello, Bing. <laughs> Bing robot. And I was talking to it, like you know, like wow, yeah. And it was, and and so, you know, I was like, "Have you seen my art?" You know, my name's Chet Zar. Have you seen my art? Oh yes, blah 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 blah. And it described my artwork. Pretty good, pretty good, you know. And um, because if you think about it, it's just it's all the it's it's read everything that all the data that's been on these sites that's been mm-hmm. scraped and i was like <clears throat> okay give me some ideas for my next art show title or oh. was it titles give me titles and they all fucking sucked it's like they all it's like they they were like what an average white dude would think that wasn't like a huge fan of dark art but knew of it had like somewhat of an education on it that's th- those are the titles that they would come up, you know, it's like, it's come up with, it's like very, I wish I would, I did save it somewhere, but it was very like generic. Yeah. Uninspired. And so lame. I was like, I'm not Sad- impressed. <laughs> Sadness ghost. <laughs> you know, you know, what's funny is uh, my friend, my friend, I told my friend, I was like, you know, I think that, um, there's a lot of things that I have not done to try to get taken seriously in the art world. Like, you know, uh, one thing say have a Wikipedia page, right. Mm. You know, shit like that. And he's like, Oh, we'll just have chat GPT do it. And it was just, it was hilarious. Cause, cause he, he typed in like, he, he tried to make a, a, a Wikipedia page for me through chat GBT. And it was just like all these weird lies about museums and like, um, that I have shown in like museums that it just made up. Yeah. Yeah. And then it, it, um, and it was, and it was like, ah, oh, he's a graffiti artist. It was like, it was, everything was wrong. <laughs> you know, Everything was wrong. But I was, I was listening to, um, this, uh, interview the other day where they were saying that like AI, there there are conceptual loopholes that we don't realize as humans that we don't talk about like when you're teaching ai stuff right you're teaching it all these things 
but you can't like when we're growing up as babies, right? Do you teach your baby how to use its arm? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, and its hands or like how to taste something or to experience like there's a lot of things that we do that we never speak about right. and that and that we um or even that, what is this? How do you you know, moving an arm? It's like there's not even a word really to describe what's happening no, when you move your no. arm. There's no, there's nothing there's, and, and they were saying that there's a lot of that, right. that we just don't even think about. We don't know. And they're saying that like, yeah, you can't teach AI about these things that we, even we don't talk right. about. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah it's, yeah. it's limited only to what we can describe in words or in pictures for the case of mid journey. Right. You know. But say stuff like the moral implications of just lying, like just making up shit. Mm -hmm. like, like there are things that I think, you know, that an artificial version of intelligence will do because it's not connected to what we consider to be intelligence. Mm -hmm. Like, well, I talked to this guy who, um, the host of uh creature features or whatever i was on some show that the creature features show with that uh dude in the uh th that in the uh, castle in the castle with the 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 young girl with the dress yeah and, yeah, well, yeah. I, I always watch that show <laughs> oh i was on, on there i was on Where there and I on there? The, the guy the main dude the the rocker looking yeah dude. yeah when when were you, when <laughs> Just, were you on there um uh, i like eight nine nine months like a year ago oh, maybe yeah. i don't you know i'll find out what the the show is that was on i gotta look that up that's hilarious yeah and uh anyway that host guy was in tech before and he was talking about like how a rich guy right i think so like independently something. wealthy dude yeah something's going on there you gotta pay for that that set he was on millionaire matchmaker because i looked him up at one point oh, so i think he's yeah. a millionaire Man, maybe I could sell him a painting. <laughs> but it's so, kind of cool I, that he's like, he's got all this money and he's doing this crazy TV show that no one else, no one in their right mind would like do right. for money. You know, it's like totally. a passion project, you can tell. And, uh, but he was saying, I was like, so what's the artificial intelligence? Cause he was talking about like, oh, I should have invested in this company before and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay. He says that the artificial part, the intelligence part is like, when what it chooses right okay yeah yeah so like you go hey make me a unicorn in the style of chet czar right and so it's like what it chooses is the intelligence part right. so makes sense. i mean i don't like but it's also like well that's like saying you know to somebody like hey go get me a cup of coffee and they get you a cup of coffee like it doesn't it, it's like they go <laughs> they, you know what i yeah. mean like hey try to put like put some uh cream in it and you know <laughs> go to starbucks or whatever and then they get they bring it back to you and you like maybe it's what you wanted i, or I mean ultimately that's the i think that you know uh the power of it because I, you know i am very like you know, I've got issues with how it was uh, created using oh, da oh, the yeah. data is just so wrong. Um, but I do see like as an artist, I, I, I could see how, oh, man, I could use that. I could use that sure. like like uh, a number. There's a number of things. It's just like there's a there's a really cool editing program where you can take your videos like a podcast like this. And it will and it um, and, I, and I've used it and you and it translates it makes a transcript and it's got the video and so you can edit the video by cutting out sections of text so instead of scrolling through a video and trying to find where someone said something about you know or a bad word you want to cut out it'll it'll find it could find them all for you you could see it in the text and then remove it oh. and then it cuts the video just that's stuff. helpful yeah it's just weird it's just like uh, assist, well, I've assistant seen... type things like that you know yeah, I mean? I've seen the AI like stuff that I'm like, this is incredible. This looks fucking amazing. Mm -hmm. Like this is insane. Yeah, like that, but have I have you seen Dougie Pledger? 
Dougie Pledger stuff? I don't know. Look up Dougie Pledger on Instagram. It's like stuff is. Is this guy Timothy Moyle or Hoyle? Tim Malloy? Yeah, Tim Malloy. He's been on the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. This stuff's like really good. Yeah, he's got that. Yeah, he's got this like the TV. Fake. Yeah, TV show. The cool thing about it is it's the TV show from his comics that he's been writing for 20 years. There's a Mm. TV show in the comic that this one character likes. And he never fleshed it out, but it had like a title, I think. And right. so now he's doing stills of the TV show from that comic. And it's like, that's how an artist uses AI. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's not like, doesn't make some bullshit that it, it all looks the same. It's also like, well, who, I mean, like all you have to do, like, this is one thing I always think is so funny is, you know, somebody will send me a, like an article or something to try to convince me that my, you know, super leftist views are crazy and i'm like i just i just google who wrote the article and it's like insane ex con scam artist scumbag (laughs) fucking psycho and then like i just send them the articles about the guy that wrote it and go this guy wrote it and you go well who's making ai and you're like peter teal or like yeah just like psychotic fucking scumbags or musk yeah. yeah elon musk like just the 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 most evil idiots of all time are like in charge of all these things and you go could you just reserve some judgment like if this is good or not like maybe don't participate until you know like if like the most fucked up person of all time is behind it or like <laughs> i don't know like... <laughs> it's yeah well it's it's you know what what's happened is it's so um you know uh intoxicating to be able to yeah. make these amazing images without having any kind of real or not a strong art background we'll say to put it nicely you can make yeah. these it's 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 kind of got this i haven't really i messed with it a little bit just to try it out and it was like you know this is taking the fun part out as far as i'm concerned which is conceptualizing the and the process and creating this stuff it's like why would i give that up that's the best part is making it and coming up with the ideas and stuff but Right. But doing anything is inconvenient to people. They want to get straight to the end. Yeah. And- we, well, that's that's what I've, I'm kind of getting at is that you see a lot of people um, intoxicated on this newfound power. And it's, you know, uh, you know, we know that feeling because we make mm-hmm. paintings and artwork and stuff. And it's like it's a, a good feeling to to create something that looks, you know, looks good. But mm-hmm. they just have it all of a sudden. They're like, "Oh my god!" And they're just cranking the stuff out. So it's like I kind of get it. I understand that the uh-huh. getting kind of addicted to that feeling. Uh, 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 but uh, uh, <laughs> did I, you I, type I, this by yourself? <laughs> what's that? Did you ever see that comment? Somebody posted like an AI piece. They're like, "Oh damn, that's crazy!" Did you type this yourself? <laughs> <laughs> I have seen that. Uh, but I, yeah, yeah, I guess what was my, my original point was like people, it's intoxicating, it's It's intoxicating, but then it like, you know, instead of questioning, it's so much fun. Instead of questioning the people behind it, it's like, you know, they're more likely to be like, well, maybe he's not so bad. Maybe Pete, Peter Thiel's not so bad. Yeah, you know? <laughs> I think the, like it's it's like one of those things where you're like, oh, I opened a fortune cookie and I got my little fortune, and it's like a cool little fun experience. And then, but with this, but with shit like this, it's like back up a dump truck of fortune cookies and then you just open up the fortune cookies and <laughs> nothing means anything yeah. anymore it's like like it's like the emptiness continues because ultimately the motivation behind stuff being created is what your general outcome is going to be like what you experience from it if it's somebody who's like how do i manipulate the public into giving me money and information so that I can then increase my vast wealth. Like that is then going, that is that regardless of the form it takes, that's going to translate into the experience. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like, wow, this is really, really cool. Like this looks insane. 
but your experience ultimately beyond the initial like shocking fun surprise is 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 one of like continued emptiness mm -hmm. because you have not gotten to know yourself better right. through your through art you have not understood discipline you have not understood you have, you have not increased the threshold of ability or you know increased like sort of the, the, the territory of how you understand yourself and others and art and blah, blah, blah. It's like, you've done nothing. You've done fucking nothing. You've, you <laughs> like it and, but it's fun and it looks cool and it's immediately like gratifying, yeah. but like you have nothing really. And you've basically participated in something that's like amoral. And like, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, so I'm not saying the actual art itself is amoral, but I'm saying that like, you've given information to these scumbags that sit in their like, you know, blood tanks yeah, in, you know, in their <laughs> mansions or whatever. It's like, no, you I know, know, I know what you're saying. I, I, I was like, I don't blame the people. Right. Like, I'm not like, I'm not like you're bad because you did this. Like, I feel like everybody, again, we're all in the same situation right. we're all in the same algorithm so me not participating in this shit doesn't make me like better like i'm not gonna wa wag my finger and shit like yeah, i'm yeah, just we're like, all complicit on some level yeah. to all the corruption in the world basically yeah. just to totally. be alive there's no way there's no way yes so it's like well okay but like you know maybe we should just i don't know it's like you know they it's that old the old saying of um um it's the, the journey. The important part is the journey getting there. And that's true when it comes to art. It's like, to me, the important part is making the art and the journey of ha getting to the final piece. And the final piece is kind of like an artifact left over. That's the way yes. I see it. Yes. And, and I sell them because I have to. It's like, or right. I would just give them away if I was just rich. I would give them to my friends and stuff. But um, it's cool. like <laughs> when you... <laughs> With with AI, it's like you're kind of it's happened so fast that you're kind mm -hmm. of missing the journey. You don't get the journey. You don't get the m main part. But I suppose, and I always try because I always try and like see the other side. I suppose you could say that, you know, doing the prompts and adjusting the prompts and looking at the the output and then readjusting is a new part of a new way of the journey. It just is not something I'd be interested in. It's like I, I right. I'm yeah. not I, I paint because I'm not good with words, you know. It's like I I'm not a I, you know, if I could put it into words, I wouldn't have to paint it. That's the way I feel like it. So it's like to get it I'm trying to make something that is you know, it sounds kind of pretentious, I suppose, but I'm I'm really at my best, I'm always trying to make something that is so good that you can't put it into words. Mm, like for, yeah. it's just something about it, it resonates with you and you can't put it into words. And so that. that's cool. So it's like, but I don't, it's like, you know, I, I uh, made a post on Twitter recently where it's like, I, you know, um, my doodling and designing, it's like most of the time it's nonverbal. It's not, I'm not thinking at all. It's like, Totally intuitive, and then it's and then I see something, and I go, oh, I'll develop that some more, and just see where it goes. And that's like the fun. It's a game. It's like a fun game, like playing a crossword puzzle or something. You know, it's like well, you're putting yourself in a position solitary. of discovery. Yeah, and so like it's exciting. Well, yeah, yeah and, and you're you're discovering it by lighting the torch and walking around and checking it out, mm -hmm. seeing what where and all this stuff. And I just think that like you know, regardless of whatever the medium is in which you're lighting a torch and you're wandering around and ex and checking things out and building stuff that requires a certain amount of um, resilience and, you know, getting in your own, in your own uh, lane and taking a little risk here, doing this, like trying this, mess, messing up, go growing, doing this. And it requires a sort of, and, and it creates this like steps. Mm -hmm. It requires during, time, right? you know? It yeah. And time. I think that like with uh, prompts is that essentially it's really cool, but it has nothing to do with learning about yourself really. 
And, and, and like, I just don't, I just don't know how like telling something to do the thing is like, <laughs> okay, let me play devil's know. advocate. Let me play yeah, devil's, yeah. Because... I'm in, I'm in, I mean, per, also I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I know. I, I know. And, and, and I'm not, I'm not doing it other, other than I, 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 I think, I bet you someone out there is listening that does. Or going oh, to, for sure. Everybody listen. hates my opinion. No, no, that's no. All... <laughs> I, I, but I'm like, that's a valid point. All this is happening in my head while you're talking. Uh -huh. by the yes. Way. But, um, like we're doing, <laughs> I'm thinking someone, someone out there is going, okay. But for me, refining, mm. coming up with the initial prompt, looking at all the outputs, seeing the one that resonates with me, developing that, doing more prompts, blah, blah, blah. To me, that's the process. That's how I, I could see in the future with this becoming ubiquitous and just another form of art along with all the others, I could see an artist that, I mean, I wouldn't be satisfied at all, but I could see someone that, that is really into that process and, and, and using, using that process in, in the same way that traditional artists do. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, I definitely think that, um, I do, I do think the one thing that I'm unclear about though, is that without artists having done the journey first, there would be no source material mm -hmm. for the process. Yeah, that's true. So that, that for me is like the thing where it's like, it's like, it's, like I understand what you're saying and it's probably true, but you would not have what you are doing if it wasn't for other people doing their work. Mm -hmm. Like, so there's something up there that I feel like is like, you're taking other people's journeys and co-opting it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, so it's sort of like, look, I'm an artist. It's like, uh, <laughs> last I checked, you weren't fucking eating beans out well, of a can. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's like the way I feel about that is. <laughs> yeah. I'm killing it. <laughs> I, the way I feel about it is like, okay, look at any artist. Cause yeah. any, there's a lot of artists that are doing like abstract work or cubism mm -hmm. and they can't draw shit. They don't have the fundamentals down and any artist, any artist worth a shit, in my opinion, knows the fundamentals. So it's like, you know, like people like Picasso uh, that he could paint, he could paint real, you know, figurative work and realism. He was really good. He just went in that funky primitive thing. He was whatever, yeah. the, you know, I, I was never really into it, but it's like, I, he has had the fundamentals. It's like, even if you're doing conceptual art, if you're an artist, if you're going to call yourself an artist, you should know the fundamentals, I think. Mm -hmm. At least as, you know, you should try to to know them. You know, you should try and learn them. Mm -hmm. um, if you care, yeah. if you really care about art, you want to know all about all kinds of different art and all kinds of different disciplines within art. You know, and and, and I or I could just type your name into the <laughs> thing. Yeah, why why and learn all that it, bullshit? And then type it. Like, I wonder, I wonder how like funny it's like, I, I I do think it's like kind of funny where it's just like, man, I just want people to be able to make art. And then all of a sudden you go to an art show and it's just like your art, but their prompts. <laughs> like that's I, I have to say, I, I've seen there actually I've seen there there's a place where you can buy uh I don't know how it works, but like your art no listen, individual trained modules trained on a specific artist's artwork it's almost like this oh. weird underground thing this guy sent it to me and one was a chet czar module Damn. and it fucking sucked they all looked like shit they didn't look like my work they didn't look like my work like i would never none of them would i think i mean it was like certain elements but yeah. i don't think i don't know maybe I, maybe there's not enough of my work out. I don't know. Maybe yeah. I, I don't understand why I don't really yeah. care, but, um, right. Totally. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing ultimately is that like, you know, I have my, like I do art for me and mm -hmm. I do it so that, you know, I can make my fun stuff and like make, you know, I can make money off it sometimes. And it, I'm better at making money off art than digging ditches and shit. Mm -hmm. So, 
you know, I might as well just keep, keep ripping it and stuff. But like, <laughs> it is like kind of funny where, you know, you see this sort of like, I don't know, handful of, um, I don't know, it's like uh, AI artists and they all, all have that same kind of patina on them yeah. and they all kind of look like they're from the same universe and shit. And it's all kind of the same. And I'm and like, yeah, it's gen- homogenized kind of and generic. I, now here's the thing. I think it looks fucking awesome. Mm. I, I'm like, yo, this shit looks crazy, dude. That's fucking, <laughs> this shit is fried. This looks weird, <laughs> you know, but like, it's also very new for us. So I don't know if our brains are very good at categorizing where it fits yet. Mm-hmm. And I think so for now, I'm just sort of like, I don't know, whatever, man. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, <laughs> I can, to, it seems to, I don't think it's going to take over anything. I think it's going to be another art form. I bet. I bet you it's going to be another, if people are into it still, it's just going to go in, you know, look, look at the shit we do is like, it's not current. You know, we're doing totally old school shit that was like not yeah, popular yeah. for <laughs> hundreds of years practically or whatever. It's like it was like some fucking 80 year old dude looking at my shit, like probably like, man, what the fuck? This is what I was doing in the 60s, man. You fucking <laughs> no, I mean, fucking it's, yeah. as far as like the media, what we're using and what we're doing, even it's like, you know, we're just putting our own personal spin on these traditional things because we like it. And that's it. So it's not like we're doing the hot new thing by doing traditional art. It's like, you know, the hot new thing right now is AI art or digital art or whatever, which is all good. But um, I don't know. I just feel like it's not even I don't feel threatened by it because it's just not even in my wheelhouse. It's like people that buy my art want an original, especially the originals, you know, they want an original painting from me you know it's they'll never want an ai version of it that someone else made that isn't like an original piece that's you you know you can't feel it you can't touch it you can't you know it's just but you know it's gonna it's gonna definitely disrupt a lot of other industries and (laughs) yeah (laughs) it is hey i gotta take a piss one second like all right say something funny while i'm gone all right uh uh Okay, Skinner's taking a piss. I'm looking at his wall here. Um, he's got these uh, like Hindu gods on the wall that are pretty cool. Um, man, I, uh, that's a uh, uh, that's Kali. There's Kali, I think. Kali's the destroyer, right? And then there's this. I don't know what the other one is. Um. And there's some other things that are kind of weird paintings on the wall. I mean, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see all this stuff yourself. Anyway, have, enjoying the conversation with Skinner. He's an interesting guy. Always love talking to him. Um, he'll be back. I mean, I guess I could edit. I, I prefer not to edit if possible. Um just because I'm I'm always trying to do these things as efficiently as possible so they only take up one day of my time of my week. And uh, yeah. I'll probably edit this. <laughs> it's just finding the spot. There we go. There. <laughs> I tried. I, tr- I tried. You feel better? Yeah. Uh so um so uh, what, one thing I was thinking is kind of funny is uh, like with AI is like you could just do anything like like I mean soon it's going to be basically like you can just um because you see the beer commercials and shit yeah. where it kind of <laughs> looks like a David Cronenberg nightmare or whatever that's, okay. I mean that's a, it that's what's what it, what it's great at is making totally fucked up shit when it makes mistakes is when it's cool when it's right. really cool but anyways but like soon it's just gonna be like oh i didn't get 
good footage of my wedding, I'm just going to put my face in and like, <laughs> just like take somebody else's wedding videos and like put your face in it and be like, yeah, we you had a good wedding. Check it out. You like, probably could do that now. <laughs> yeah, I think the thing is like funny is that it really does feel like we've just progressively gotten into this place where we trust less and less of anything. And mm -hmm. then now AI is basically just going to make it so that like, you don't know what's real ever. And then I we're know. all just going to go insane. Yeah. It seems, yeah, that's like, <laughs> that's, that's a big concern too. I mean, man, I cause it, cause you, yeah. You're, you know, you're, think about like the, the internet, like the, the like internet literacy of like baby boomers and shit where they're getting scammed by people. Mm -hmm. Like, they're getting fished and their information is stolen yeah. constantly. And they're getting and they're, totally manipulated into believing ridiculous conspiracies, QAnon, QAnon, QAnon like, shit. Yeah. And then like, and then you put AI into the <laughs> Yeah. Forget it, man. It's over. <laughs> they're just done, dude. They're just melted. Oh. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, it's one of those things too, where you can kind of, I think you could take the the AI and kind of participate however you want is like, Oh, like right. having an AI conversation with your parents on the phone and like, like just being like, all right, I guess I never have to talk to them again. Or whatever. <laughs> uh, it's like just shit like that. Like just like put, put like put in your personality into a, a right. and send it be like, and then it would just have prompts. Like what are a few things that you'd like to, talk to them about right. be like and then just you type it all in and then they just go back and forth and you're like oh cool <laughs> <laughs> i'm pretty sure you can do that now if you wanted to i've i've heard of it you know creating email emailing people and it's you, you know it made me think of something uh something you said i don't remember what it was but it made me think of how oh i guess you're saying that you know everyone going crazy for, from ai not being able to know the difference uh in reality uh i noticed you know when the people started becoming like radicalized from the algorithm mm -hmm. and 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 uh everybody chasing the algorithm and trying to i mean i'm doing it with this podcast like i keep trying to get it to catch in the algorithm because i just want the podcast to get out to more people and it's like wow. slowly it's getting there but it's like i'm this slave to this algorithm and we're like that on every social media platform and it, and it made me think like that's it that's the enslavement by the robots that's the that's the terminator yeah. right there it's not cool robots with machine guns it's this it's these algorithms on the so and on the only way or the main way that we all communicate with each other completely enslaved by them it's like okay your alternative is to just stop using them and not talk to anybody anymore i guess because nobody Nature talks to each other healing. it's like you have to you have to uh maybe people will just have to drop it all and start doing things and talking in person again um, well, you know, it is interesting because it's like when i think about artists and our art industry is that the internet is like a democratization of art mm. stuff before it was like well hope i get into juxtapose magazine yeah i'll never be able to do this as yep. a peer, you know or and if, then unless like, you had a bunch of money you could like take an ad out or something right but it's like none of us no one has any any money <laughs> yeah so i was like oh gotta get into this magazine a bunch of times and then um and then i was like all right kind of worked a little bit and then and then like basically the internet i was like oh now i gotta be online all the time fuck yep. okay I guess i'll do this i'll try to have fun and shit but then after a while you realize that it's just so many diminishing returns and yeah. you know at the end of the day the 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 way that i treat myself in in reaction to the internet like am, am i being um patient and understanding that like i don't have control over the way that they fuck this up like i don't know like i'm just gonna do my best but like i don't have any control over it and i don't know what's gonna happen so i hope that my you know just doing good art gets me by and like that's kind of like one of the things is you know ultimately we can't control shit except for how we react. Mm -hmm. to 
And so I'm like, you know what? I can't control the way that, you know, whatever Mark Zuckerberg and his team of people like destroys the Instagram even worse. Mm -hmm. What I can do is just make is dunk on them relentlessly. <laughs> well, <laughs> I can do that too, which I like to do. <laughs> but what I can do is like just make really, really good art and try to get really good at it. Right. And try to have my my efforts be seen and just put it out there and just yep. hope like, hey, cool. Like it I did my best or whatever. Like here it is, you know. And That's then <laughs> pretty much all we got, you know? Yeah. And 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 in that way it kind of takes us back yeah. to the initial thing is like you know, if I'm going to get into a magazine, it's going to be because my art's real good or whatever. Right. It's not going to be because I'm posting all the time or like, it's not going to be, it's like, I think that like just worrying about the things that you can control, staying grounded in that way mm -hmm. and, and taking care of yourself and then just showing up like as a positive person in the world is like the only thing that you can do to combat all this bullshit. Yeah. So that's what I do. And dunk online on me. <laughs> dunk on Elon Musk. I mean, of all the people, dude, he's the dumbest. He's the fucking. Oh, he's I, so, can't, I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't believe it. It's like, it's so obvious. And it's like, you know, he's completely become like this hardcore right winger. It's like every day he's getting worse and you could watch it. And I watched it in real time. He used to be kind of like like a liberal kind of guy, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like, you, you see it and it's like, he, it's so ironic. He's getting, uh, uh, radicalized by his own fucking platform. Well, you, you see, yeah, it's, it is very interesting, right? Because what you see is that like his ego is extremely fragile and, and here, here's the thing I'll say. You're never supposed to let nerds have power, man, because, <laughs> because because they turn in, they turn into jocks like they turn into the assholes. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like and you realize that, like, you know, power is in in the pursuit of it. But that like the fact that this guy basically traded in his life as sort of like a respected entrepreneur for a childish idiot mm -hmm. on line troll like person is just fucking wild to watch where he's just like, like literally lost billions and billions. Yeah, of it's, it's like, insane. It's insane. All respect gone. And, like, and, and he, and people, <laughs> his fans are like, love him. Like doubling. They like, it's like, well, he's a reflection of them. Like yeah. that's the thing in a lot of ways. It validates that, these really kind of negative far right, people yeah you know well but he's like the idea is that like you know oh i'm a first amendment free speech person it's like until someone says they don't like you yeah yeah and so you realize that these people are also full of bullshit because they have their like stringent beliefs until anything happens to them at all like they just crumble it's yep. just they're just i mean you must <laughs> like this dude, it's like they never should have gave him shit, you know? <laughs> well, you know. It's never like a really cool, interesting, compassionate, wonderful person with vision and long-term views and ideas and like understanding about how our paradigm shift needs to be steeped in connection and understanding. It's like, it's always some guy who's like, I changed the name of Twitter to Titter. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, good. I mean, it's worse than that movie Idiocracy. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I mean, the, the thing, you know, I, I was like, when I was casually aware of him, I thought he was like the genius guy, too. I thought he was like, oh, he's a genius. He's Everyone says he's a genius. <laughs> and, That's and, amazing. And then I started watching, and then I started seeing his, his ideas for Twitter, like how he was going to change things. And, his, and it was like, wait a minute, this is like, this is like a stupid, like I'm not that smart. And I can tell that what he's saying, yeah. these ideas are dumb. It's a totally uh, just like a dumb person would come up with no intel, not like brilliant or clever or anything like stupid, <laughs> stupid ideas. And I was like, what? And this, so I started researching all this stuff and it's like, yeah, he's like, he's, he got lucky 
he's not a genius. He's not a genius. No. He got lucky and he's like a scammer. And it's like most of these right hardcore right wingers are, you know, I know the term grifter is overused because everyone's using it, but that they are. They're grifters. They're making money. They're making but money. But the thing is, it's is like that if you, you want to be know... a big YouTuber right now, start a right wing anti woke channel. That's because the rage. Feed, yeah. feeds the algorithm. they'll give you all their money too it's like i mean it's it's very fascinating like watching these people just just you know bleed the like scared public who are like yeah i don't like being uncomfortable with the idea that somebody else is doesn't share the same um homogenous you know heteronormative ideas ideas that i have or whatever it's like that makes me uncomfortable i will pay any amount of money not to be uncomfortable right. <laughs> so yeah, right but it is funny um you know watching uh basically the hellscape that elon has created for himself where like that weird uh strange person cat turd yeah basically basically like every time they complain they're like twitter's not i my tweets aren't getting yeah. any traction and, and he's then, not like, looking into it and then elon has <laughs> to be like oh sorry cat turd we'll figure this out i'll be right back like what the fuck that's the thing I, that, that's what i was gonna say too is like okay you know you've got the you've got people saying oh he's in the center uh, yeah he's, in the, he's center. in the center that's like the big thing like these tim pool guys and stuff it's like people like that they're like yeah i'm an old school liberal centrist it's like no fucking i can you can't fool me asshole i'm yeah. watching it i can see it happen i'm not also, so any... dumb that you can you can trick me like you're tricking other people it's like well, i anytime... can see it happen i can see what you're saying i can see what you're doing yeah. i can see who, who yeah. you're responding to it's like all he responds to are these fucking nazis and white nationalists and assholes well, it's like it's like a, it's like a long-term project to get regular people that are like i'm not racist i'm just uh I'm you just know asking i'm asking questions i'm just a common sense person yeah, i'm yeah. not just asking questions. and then all of a sudden you're listening to like you know tim pool or ben shapiro or whatever and then all of a sudden like basically the guy that you listen to all the time is like name you know name checked in a manifesto at a at a shooting somewhere yeah that's what just happened with that dude in the uh, the uh doubt the yeah. texas one it's like he was a yeah. tim pool he had a bunch of tim pool posts oh really yeah it just came out today like they they found he, his they found him he was an hispanic guy and all the the republicans were saying oh he looks like a gang member they found they pictures, showed the photos of his nazi tattoos. nazi tattoos tim pool uh videos he was posting <laughs> all this like Dude, super if, racist if, stuff if a nazi if a nazi like shoots up a club and then like your name is on their post a lot like they're posting yeah, your shit you might might you might want to rethink some stuff but but it's always funny the the of kind of the kind of talking style of like tim pool or ben shapiro or yeah you know, just talk Crowder fast it, like oh, actually uh you know you're the one you're the one who's wrong but uh you know here's here's the thing as i you know it's like why why are they all fuck like doing that that's weird yeah so strange i'm like talk normal motherfucker like yeah, you, sound, yeah. you sound like a like a fucking beetle that did meth or something <laughs> <laughs> crack beetle like a weird little <laughs> puppet puppet on crack yeah a little crack muppet <laughs> <laughs> i live in a world of crack muppets get me out of here i don't know i i you know i don't get super political on the show but man this is like it's so blatant it's so obvious it's like uh -huh. i can't it's it's so i just am like how can anybody be fooled by this it's like they're bullshitting you man and you and it's like the fans of these people they respect you the least man because they're taking you for a ride they're completely they don't give a shit they don't give a shit. They don't at care all. about people. They just want to get money. And then they do things that are emotionally reactive to get money. Like, mm -hmm. like that's the thing that's so interesting about Trump is like, which I, I find to be like one of the sadder things is that the people I know 
you know, I went to high school with or my mom's like, you know, office friends or whatever who are like, yeah, we're into Trump or whatever. And I, and I just, in my mind, I like, I just know that this dude, like you couldn't pay this dude to give a fuck about you. Oh yeah. yeah. Like, like this so. guy doesn't like, you're the mark. Like if you yep. like Trump, you're the mark. Yeah. Specific. He's like, Oh, these people are, are dumb enough to fall for my bullshit. So I'm going to like use them. Is like, it, dude, those, those NFT things, like that's oh, fucking... the Trump NFT. <laughs> <laughs> those are priceless. Those are amazing. It's like, it's like, it's like well, you know, you know, like we're in the inside out world because those are like memes. Like those look like fried, like deep fried memes yeah. from you know, like 10 years ago or something. <laughs> you know, it's like, dude, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> Like, it's totally like bizarre. Trump, world, Trump with Grumpy Cat uh, <laughs> in uh, NFT. You're like Trump as a frogman, like Trump as a marine. You know, Trump Trump torturing people in Guantanamo Bay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's unbelievable. It's like yeah, you, you just can't make it up. You just can't make mm -hmm. it up. It's like no one would believe it if you made it up. Yeah. Tim and Eric, uh, did you ever watch that show? Tim and Eric, awesome show, great job. You know, I, I only started watching that show this year. It was the first time I ever saw it. As like, a way of understanding what happened to our world. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, I just like, I never watched it. And I and I saw these, saw re I don't know how I started seeing it on YouTube clips. It's like so hilarious. So amazing. But it's like, it's like the, uh, when I was, I would buy the dvds at uh fucking uh what was that big big box store wherever where you go buy dvds and tvs and all that shit whatever anyway i would come home and watch the dvds of tim and eric awesome show great job and like i don't know like what was it 15 years ago mm. or something and uh I was like, wow, this is cool. Like, well, these people, like, they're making fun of culture and, like, all this shit. And, and, and in a nightmarish way. Right, yeah. Well, what happened was, like, our world slowly <laughs> sort of started to reflect the, the sketch. Night, the, nightmare, <laughs> the nightmare became real. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, dude, like... Everything that happens feels like a, like a, you know, it like does, the, yeah. the, did you, I don't know if you saw the Steven Crowder, um, uh, he was like saying like him, him and his, you know, he's some right wing guy. Lot, yeah. I know all about Steven Crowder. I know okay. So his, uh, his, his like wife is like leaving him because he's crazy that and psychotic work either. Did you hear that clip? <laughs> right. And like, and there's like a thing where he like does, you know, when people come forward and go, I want to address the allegations and stuff, but he goes, okay. First of all, this is not my children's fault. Yeah, that was so. Or what? And that's weird. a total Tim Heidecker like joke yeah, thing. Right, like, you would come forward <laughs> and immediately make it about your children's that's fault so somehow. Yeah, and yeah. like, and it's it's all in and every time I watch this shit or I kind of am like, you know, listening to like what are my podcast and like like just like reviewing what's the, the the you know eternal deterioration of things i i just go dude this is all tim and eric shit from like 15 years ago like this is all stuff that would have got cut mm -hmm. from <laughs> yeah, it's right. not, it's, like it's not good enough or whatever you know <laughs> and like and i'm just like it's become a tim and eric show that's not the, it, the scenes that weren't good enough that's kind of perfect well, it's a little it's a little like the onion you know where like yeah. the onion's like guess we don't have a job anymore <laughs> <laughs> You know, like that's what we're dealing with. Like this is shit is crazy. You know? like, I don't know, dude. Oh, my God. You know, I've said this before on the podcast, and that is, you know, growing up, uh, the way that we did, it's mm -hmm. like we are sort of suited to this environment of chaos in a way. Because just in the in the way that we uh, we grew, up, you know, I know my situation was like it was chaos was the was the issue. It was like lack of control, everything, people fighting all around me, being alone, kind of like you know. And and of course, I, we talked about those 
a habits you develop to cope with it um, that don't serve you as an adult. But we're kind of like in a world now that is like kind of like the world I feel like I grew up in a little bit in the sense that uh, you can't count on anything, really. You know, there's not a lot of you just you can't you just like you can't you you can't count on anything. (laughs) Everything any you can't like there's nothing to hold on to. There's no more jobs that you could that you're going to like take care of you and give you a pension. It's like over. And it's and it and it's you know, that's that's what it was like being a kid in the 70s. It was like. Who knows what's going to happen? Who knows who's you know what? Who's... There's no adult in the room. Yeah, anything can. Happen. And there, and there, the, you know, we're at the. It's like the dead end of Western civilization, and like <laughs> nobody in charge is like completely rudderless. So yeah, yeah, so so in a sense, it's like we 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 know how to navigate that, and and I think that I think there may have been valuable skills mm-hmm. that we we learned that as long as we are self aware and understand what's not healthy. There, there may have been some kind of s- skills that we learned back there to deal with the way things are now. Like maybe maybe an attitude of of uh, being okay with not holding not of, of not having control of things, mm-hmm. you know, in a way. Yeah, I I, I could see that. Um... Or at least, you know, we, we are familiar with it and maybe, or maybe it's a matter of, we can recognize it even, you know, recognizing that. Well, it's like a little, you know, it's a little bit like the only thing that's real is like what's in the moment in a lot of ways. Like I remember when we were growing up, you know, when I was whatever, growing up in the eighties and you know, the, the best thing that I could do for myself in the low income apartment complex i lived in was like go hang out with the other kids Mm -hmm. we would ride our bikes around and throw rocks at each other and and trees dirt cloud fights yeah yeah dirt clouds and all kinds of shit we'd go into the the you know build uh tree houses and Mm -hmm. hang out fight and then apologize and do all this shit and like that was all outside of the purview of what our parents were doing like we had our own little lives right and in a way that's you know the idea is like yeah like okay i have to tolerate the fact that i'm living in the world of these these people that i don't understand nor trust well Mm -hmm. but i got my friends i could see them and that's kind of cool and like that it's just like it's like yeah like getting by having some resilience getting by right staying connected to people that love you having a little community controlling the small amount that you can in your life, Mm -hmm. like how you react to things, doing your best, having integrity. And, you know, it's the friends we made along the way. You got to get yourself a little Samwise Gamgee. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, just like you were saying, uh, um, uh, 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 it just slipped out of my head. Uh, I said a lot. Yeah, I know, so. I know. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. No, no, no. It was. Wait a minute. I'll, 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 it'll come to me. Um. Uh. Fuck. It's gone. Said so can't control nothing. Oh, it, it it was. It's like it's like the Zen thing. You know, like the Zen thing is, you start off as a baby and you have nothing. It's all you know. You got a smooth brain. You got no programming, and then you get programmed, and then you work to deprogram yourself so that you can come back around and be like a baby again, but with that knowledge also. It's like yeah. you're, the goal of Zen and meditation and all this is is um, to have a clear mind, basically, you know, to have a clear mind. And so you, you strive to get back to that baby state, but it's with all the knowledge as well that you got to get there. So it's like, it's, it's, and and it's kind of like that living in this chaos world we live in now. It's like, we grew up in chaos, but we didn't know any different and did these, you know, things got all crazy. And then as adults, we grow up and then we understand why we were doing, why we were, how we were coping in the way that we were and how these are unhealthy habits. But now we have, we can, 
it, it's somehow we're kind of back to where we were when we were kids in that environment again. And, but now we know, now we know, uh, that we can deal with it mm -hmm. and that we have agency and that we don't have to let it destroy us, you know, cause we've been through it before and we made it and we, and, and maybe as long as we're aware, it's like the problem is when you're not aware and, 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 and the behaviors start coming out, like you were saying with depression or with OCD, I was saying, it's like, you know, they, they were like unacknowledged mm -hmm. trauma. <clears throat> That's when the problem is. But if you acknowledge the trauma, you can kind of, I think, take the experience and use it to your benefit in a way. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's also the kind of force, you know, the like whatever hindsight where you're like, yeah, I did think the world was ending for a long time. Mm -hmm. And turns out it never really did. Yeah. Even though I, think, and, and I did think it was, and I was very upset. And I spent a lot of time and energy feeling very uncomfortable about things I couldn't change. And it turns out those things never even happened. Right. And, you know, like the, the brain, the mind is a wonderful servant but a terrible master yeah <laughs> yeah that's a classic <laughs> <laughs> and it's whipping my ass up and down the block <laughs> <laughs> i well okay we got but we got to talk about um oh, yeah. we got it we got to <laughs> people are asking me because i made the announcement in the in the facebook group that you're going to be on people are asking me about your your movie we have to talk about that. And and also, you know, here's another thing about going back to AI. You're making a stop motion movie. You know, it's like that is fucking 60, 70s technology. You know what I mean? It's like that, it just point point and it, and it it's just like the tool videos. The tool videos mm -hmm. were stop motion and and they and stop motion was totally not a cool thing when they did that. It's like that was an old technology, but it's like there's still a market for it or an audience. I hate to say there's a market for it, but there's still an audience for it, even though you're going to be able to, even though you could do it digitally, mm. maybe with less effort. I don't know. Maybe not, but, but it could look more realistic or whatever, but you're choosing to use stop motion because stop motion yeah. is cool. And it doesn't matter how great the technology gets for CGI or AI stop motion is always going to look a certain way and it's going to be cool. Just the way that oil paintings are always going to be cool looking, you know, whatever acoustic guitar, or, you know, it's like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It went, I, we, we went in reverse. We went back in time. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. My friend Ross is an amazing stop motion guy. And we're like, let's make this movie. And, you know, we've been working on it for six years and. Oh my God. Six years. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. Damn. That's crazy. That's a very not, uh, immediate gratification yeah. style of doing shit. But I, I actually have been working on a lot of stuff for a long time, Yeah. but there it won't, and people won't know until it all comes out, you know, but I've been working <laughs> on like a fucking, a video game. Oh, wow. Called Flesh Haunted Lords. It's like uh, it's like uh, Golden Axe. It's like a what? I mean, it's like Golden Axe, kind of. I don't know Golden Axe. That style. Um, yeah, like a side scroller kind of beat 'em up, thirty-two meg. Like it's like a old school. Um, but then and like a board game called Rel Realm Runners that I've been working on, and oh, like wow. tons of just random shit. Another movie and all this stuff. Damn. But like. The thing is, is that like, it's like just finding collaborators that want to make cool stuff and yeah. then trying to facilitate it for them and be like, all right, cool. So Shrine of Abominations though, uh, the funding went to like 140 K after all was said and done. That's so awesome, man. we we're like, yeah, I couldn't, but I'm so fucking grateful, man. But like, basically um, we're now in this because we got a bunch of money, I was like, well, let's just like make some scenes longer and bigger and like more crazy and shit and all mm -hmm. this stuff. So it'll be about like 40 minutes. Um, totally. <laughs> it's totally insane, dude. But um, I built all these giant sets and hand painted like big, big backgrounds, you know, the matte paintings and um, 
building underground scenes and horror. It's it's like a totally insane horror fantasy psychedelic situation. And um, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, it's, it's cool. Like it. <laughs> yeah, um, because like a couple of years ago, I was helping. I I'd showed up to volunteer some time on Phil Tippett's Mad God movie. And, and it was, you know, it was cool. It was like the fact that Tippett Studios is out here in, in Oakland, uh, Berkeley. And we kind of became friends and he helped. Really? Yeah, he's helped on Shrine of Abomination. Uh, that's so cool. I want to get him on the podcast. Oh, um, I could contact him and stuff and see if and, he would do it. Yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, fuck yeah. He's a, yeah, he's fast and he's, he's a fast. Yeah, he's a hero, man. You know what's like so crazy is um when when you you know because it's like it starts out with Willis O'Brien, right? Mm. And it's like Willis O'Brien, then Ray Harryhausen, then Phil Tippett, and you know, there's essentially not like a real next gen person after right. that. Now, now there is some amazing stop motion people at Tippett Studios, mm -hmm. like just fucking amazing. But when it comes to like aesthetic visionary weirdo shit, you know, and, and I, that's not me. Cause I, I don't actually do stop motion. Like I'm not like my friend Ross does it. I help him. I support yeah, him. Yeah. I, I, yeah. You know, it's a whole, all, yeah. It's a whole thing. Like, you know, I, I kind of like create the story and the, the, the characters and all this shit. And then he kind of helps and he, he adds shit and stuff. But, um, you know, the sort of it starts out in this, you know, King Kong and dinosaurs and you know creatures and then mythology, and then all of a sudden it's like, uh, you know, total, um, you know, Verhoeven apocalypse sort of social commentary nightmare shit, mm -hmm. police, state, you know, uh, satire stuff and all this stuff. So. Um, we're kind of more on the, you know, monsters and mutants sort of part of it. Now there is going to be, you know, if, if we, you know, I've been kind of talking to, um, screen box, the streaming service oh, and yeah. they, yeah. they, they want to like maybe make it longer, like 80 minutes and have a theatrical release and all cool, this shit, man. but and I've been writing the script for that, like a longer extended situation, because it's basically in these like chapters mm -hmm. and um, and there will be like cyborg weirdo stuff. But um, it's definitely like an earnest. There's earnestness to mm. it. Wow. It's not, yeah, it's not like um, it's not zany. Yeah. It's pretty fucking zany, but I mean, like, yeah, you learn like you kind of like I don't know. There's just like you know, it's like earnest zany. It gets zany quick, you know. Uh, but uh, but you know, it's um I don't know. It's cool, but like the more I've been writing stories and and things is like I feel like I'm more on that like Jim Henson um kind of. Um, you know, bittersweet kind of melancholic kind of um shit, you know, mm. like uh what what was that like Jim Henson's storyteller or whatever that show was mm -hmm. where it was ran all these different things where um yeah, I like that kind of like uh fable type yeah. shit where it's like and um you take sort of the an experience you have build it out create like characters and situations that you can easily relate to and be like yes i get this i'm for this like you know i mean you see that in you know anthology films where you're like oh the person did the thing but then they felt then then they were sorry about that later <laughs> yeah. you know it's like, shit like that. <laughs> yeah morality <laughs> tales yeah yeah totally like, <laughs> like oh, the bad guy shouldn't have done that you know or like you know but like um yeah i don't know i just i think that there's also something to be said for creating things that are explicitly not formulaic yeah in trying to like arrive at a place of of you know expression where it wasn't traditional or expected and um 
Absolutely. Yeah. And just finding out what is that? What, it, what even is that? You know, I don't know. So, man, I can't wait yeah. to see it. It sounds so cool. It's, I mean, I, I'm in like a, I'm in a, this position where, and, and everybody is, that is our, our regular listeners are probably sick of hearing me talk about it, but I'm in this position to where I'm like, I took a year off of doing my solo show, a, a solo show and, and took, so I can get, like this backlog of commission work and even Kickstarter rewards for my book project. It's like, I got so overloaded with everything that I, it's like, I'm trying to take, get all the stuff I owe done this year so that I can start doing fun things like that next year. I feel like yeah. I'll, I'll be starting my life over once I clear my plate and, 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 you know, try not to get in that situation again, where I have to take, take on stuff, for money and just you know well are you trying to like uh what 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 does that look like storytelling making yeah it? yeah yeah well i got you know I, I i did the dystopia book which is the mythology mythologizing all the paintings i've done and it's like it's just begging to be made into a comic book and mm -hmm. or a game and or a series Ooh. or you know it's like uh, uh, uh what, what was that a game yeah oh yeah i mean it's like a vr game would be awesome a board game would be awesome a cart like a card what about game your buddy be... guillermo what, what let's maybe we could do a why can't you let's well get... you know i know it's, you don't want to bother nobody I, I i sent him a book he said it was great he loved it and i was i kind of mentioned you know this would be an awesome tv show and he didn't really say anything so it's like <laughs> you know he gets <laughs> He gets everybody, everybody hits him up. I'm sure, you know, it's like, oh, yeah. and it's, and it's like, I don't want to be that, that guy. Uh, um, but, and I don't have anything other than I know it would be amazing and a book, which is cool. But oh, it's yeah. like, I feel like if nothing else, it would be cool to, I feel like the next stage might be like a comic book to, to mm -hmm. tell to show the stories because that's like mm -hmm. storyboarding, uh, basically, you know, a good comic. And oh. it's something that I could do is in my power to do, um, oh. to create. And then maybe that could move to the next step. But man, it's like, once I saw love, death and robots, I was like, this is, you know, the, the, you, you've seen that, right? The, oh, yeah. Yeah. And it's like, there's a couple episodes, like the, the lat, that one that was really popular with the weird lady in the water that, that had like an artistic style, a painterly style. And the other one that that guy directed too, about the guy looking out the window and seeing the person get murdered through the window. I don't know if you remember. Oh yeah, I remember that. Those are both by the same director, and they had his artistic style. And so, I'm just thinking if I could get, I would I would go CGI in order to get the look of the paintings, but three you know, realistic, that style of animation i think it would I be could, so I cool could, i i think it would be super cool i think like your stuff being animated and in, in any capacity would be fucking yeah incredible. yeah i mean because it's like i'm a huge stop motion fan too so it's like it would, that would be amazing uh oh yeah that would dude your stuff is stop motion would be insane it would be cool but it's like i also like i could see you know it, to me the ultimate would be to make the paintings look like the paintings, but totally real and moving. Like, so it's not reality, like CG trying to look super realistic. It's CG trying to look like those paintings, but moving. Yeah. That would be yeah. so cool to me. So, anyway, you know. Well, I think that there's probably ways of actually taking your paintings and then applying all the textures of your paintings. Yeah, 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 exactly. To like 3D models maybe is what I'm sort of thinking. And, and, and I don't know. It's so, so it's like, that's, you know, that's, these are huge projects, but. Well, let's keep well, talking about that. Like just even outside of the podcast, like, let me, like, let me brainstorm. Cause I, I like to do a lot of schemes and scam. <laughs> hey, I'll, well, we'll, we'll keep the text. I'm a scammer. <laughs> we'll keep the text uh, going. Well, I, cause yeah, I want to, I want to see that happen too, probably as much as you. Do. Yeah. And it's like, I, you know, I feel like it's, it's, it's such a big project, but then it's like, you know, once I'm done with the Kickstarter of Dystopia, which is six coming up on six years that I'm behind on with rewards, 
it's been a nightmare, man. This book has been a nightmare. And, uh, but anyway, Do you need me to come down and help you ship these out. <laughs> no, no, get... it's, it's, it's like, it just was, it just, the pile got immense. I overpromised. It's a lot. I've got it under control. I'm... It's just taking time. And, um, uh, but it's like, once that's taken care of, then, you know, cause I, we raised like over a hundred grand for the dystopia project. It's like, I know, I, I bet you if I had like a really cool, uh, proposal or whatever uh, a, a, a proof of concept or some artwork or something people would want to support a kickstarter to make that happen so it's like yeah. i see the potential for all this stuff but this wow. year i just i can't do any i can't even let myself go there i just have to finish all these paintings i gotta do basically <laughs> paintings right, well, and kickstarter rewards so i'm just like i'm not thinking about anything this year but i know that next year i'll, I'll be open to be able to do all the cool stuff you know okay well how about this keep me in mind as somebody to to brainstorm about like things totally and i have lots of resources and friends and yeah. connections and stuff that i would love to try to see if it would work but also even like if you're like yeah i want to do a stop motion thing i don't think it would be that hard if we built a little set and then made an amazing puppet and then did like a test. Oh yeah. 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 I, I, I mean, I will, but, you, you said it, so I'm, I'm not going to let you uh, forget it. Oh, don't <laughs> worry. Gonna keep bugging you. <laughs> I'll be pawning this off on somebody else. With quickness. You're learning. No, you're, lear <laughs> <laughs> you're learning like Elon yeah, Musk, I man. Gotta make some calls. Hey, I got an idea for this other dude. Hey, you need to help this dude. <laughs> Uh, no, but I, I, I definitely, I think that would be cool. I mean, like even just, that. even this fucking, this golem guy that you got over here, this dude behind you, um, by the, uh, <laughs> the phantom. <laughs> yeah. That thing. But like, I think that like, even just like a fucking dude coming out of a tomb and he's outside and there's creepy shit. Oh, everywhere. There's... How about this guy? You have no shortage of, Oh, that, that guy. Yeah. The Imagine president. that thing like moving and going, yeah, crying blood <laughs> yeah <laughs> be so and awesome. what, yeah <laughs> and he's like toiling on something he's like trying to put something back together that he broke or something right right i got this guy i'm yeah, working dude. on oh look at that guy there's, the some, there's just it's like the, the there's so much raw material that mm -hmm. that, that I, I i'm like ah oh, i gotta do something but like i said i'm being disciplined I gotta. I'm getting this shit done. I'm not gonna leave anybody hanging on this kickstart. I don't care if it takes me fucking seven years. I'm. Everyone's gonna get what they paid for, yeah. and I'm almost done. I'm almost done. So, but people but, love you, buddy. They'll wait. It's all good. They've been so cool. There's only been a handful of terrible people that have given me shit, but most oh, ninety nine percent okay. of them are super cool. Yeah, I, I like. I always get that like random people who are like you know didn't read the whatever thing that was like it's gonna take a couple weeks and they're just like where's my shit <laughs> you stole my money you piece of shit but like, wait dude the, the their, things are being printed like as we speak right. zero they go from like zero to 60 just like it's like yeah. there's no in between of like hey checking in or anything it's just like totally coming up yeah pissed off. yeah <laughs> but you know what you realize too is that like the a lot of people are just like not well yeah yeah that they don't understand and so you just have to be like hey so hey what's up man exclamation point hope you're doing good right. sorry <laughs> you know and then you just do the customer service like a motherfucker it's like yeah totally. that's one thing i never thought i'd be good at a customer service but i'm so good at it now. oh yeah hey, sorry about the misunderstanding i'm, I'm you know? like yeah I, I take care of my customers if something you know i i i never leave them hanging man i'll eat i'll eat it before i'll let my customer customers yeah uh uh go without you know if they pay for something well, they're the very reason that we don't have to fucking you know do a t-shirt design for some like fucking mud vein or some bullshit <laughs> <laughs> is there any good money in that i don't know I, no hell no there's no money in nothing dude the only thing so that's why I like yeah like people that really directly just support what i'm doing i'm like oh my god can i just can i do you need me to oh, wash yeah. your for you <laughs> yeah, totally man 
I, 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 yeah, I feel like, uh, you, you know, uh, the pe- especially the people on the Kickstarter, the people on my Patreon, the people on the Patreon are doing like every month. It's like, I fucking, everything is for them. That's the way I view it. Uh, yeah. Everything's for them. Anybody that does isn't even willing to pay a dollar. I'm not doing it for them. I'm doing it for the people that are pay- willing to pay at least a dollar. That tells me that you care about me, that you're interested mm-hmm. in what I have, what I'm doing. And that's enough for me. And, and it's like, it's all about you. So it's like, well, anyway, you know. You too can support a starving artist. <laughs> if you pay $5 a month, and it's just art. It's just an artist with no clothes on with flies all around their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my I God, that would, that would be amazing. I want to draw a skeleton, please. <laughs> yeah, that would be, that's almost worth doing. It's almost worth making a short. You should film. do a self-portrait of you with your like, no clothes on, with flies all around your eyes, out in the desert. <laughs> People are like, "Well, this is interesting." You're like, "Oh, Skinner's idea." Yeah. <laughs> That'll be the title. It was Skinner's idea. Skinner's idea. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> fucking hilarious, bro. Oh, oh man. Oh well. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I can't believe you have all this stuff going on. It's crazy, man. I can't wait to watch this movie, though. I can't, I can't, uh, I, I, and I can't believe you made a horror comic. I was so, yeah. so jealous you did that. It's like, I always wanted to do that. It's so wait, cool. Do you need some? I can send you some in the mail. I got, I got some, I got them. I, you I got first, you got uh, one and two. I, yeah, yeah, I did the, the. Did you have more than one Kickstarter for them? Because I can't even keep track of all. I did one Kickstarter for the first one, and then I did the second one. The second issue is like ninety something, eight pages or some crazy shit. I don't remember if I got that or not. I mean, all if right. I see if I if I see your stuff, I always just support it. I don't, I don't even. Oh, look. Thanks, I don't look. Man. I don't even look and see what you're doing. I just oh, I just I donate. <laughs> You're like, I just bought some Oscars and QAnon t shirt. <laughs> no, um, no, so like because I can send you a copy of that, but um, but yeah, I have a I have a skin crawl radio drama coming out. Um Dude, I mean, it's crazy, man. Yeah, that uh bloodydisgusting.com is is putting it out. So oh it's my like God, that's so cool. Bloody bloody radio. That maybe they should do a Chet Czar radio drama they're doing you know that artist trevor um henderson he does like real creepy uh like online kind of like creepy pasta style art hmm. I don't they did they a do. they did a podcast based on his artwork wow really so, yeah maybe they would do one based on your shit yeah that, I, i'm yeah i'm you know i'll maybe. hit them up about that thank you, you. See i appreciate it i'm i'm so i'm so into all this stuff like i said i'm just trying to dig myself out of this hole so i can do these things yeah these dig projects. yourself out of the hole and then we'll have a little meeting and we'll see what we could do what all we right. could <laughs> maybe maybe skin it's like the support i just like i appreciate support. it man i swear yeah. i feel like i've been you know my whole career 20 20 two years i don't know 20 years Mm -hmm. like i've 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 always been very supportive of other artists you know um and i've always hope wished that someone would support me (laughs) like some someone that was like had some juice you know would be able to take an interest in me and help me dude you know what i mean and so maybe you're that man (laughs) <laughs> oh, well, I gotta get some juice first. No, but you know what? You know what I think would be cool. Let me. You know what I should do, man. Let me. Let me finish this movie. Let me see what I could do because I feel like I could pitch a stop motion like anthology or something like that. Now you could have your own section, your own story of That'd be your cool. stuff. That would be cool. I mean, I I think it'd be cool if it was just the Chet Czar fucking shit. Like, it doesn't need mine on it. You know what I mean? Like, I'll like. But um, uh, let me let me keep scamming a little bit. <laughs> I will. Get... We'll, we'll stay in touch about all this stuff. I really pre. That's really nice of you. I appreciate that. It's really cool of you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I need I need more schemers and scammers in my life. Yeah, we need them all around. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, what a great conversation! I so appreciate you taking the time, man. It was so so much fun. 
It didn't even seem like we were recording anything. I know we're just like talking. Like after a while, I'm like, "Wait, is anybody gonna care about this?" Shit? Like that's what happens with me now. Is like I kind of used to. I used to like care. do interviews. Like, okay, give it all you got, kid. Make it fun, you know. And now I'm just like, I don't give a fuck, man. Nobody listen to this. My- I tell. I'll tell you what, man. The, the 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 one comment I get more than any other about this podcast is that they love it because they feel like they're sitting in the room with the two artists and I've had multiple people tell me that they catch themselves talking, like saying something because it feels so much like a, like they're in the room with two art, two other artists. Dude, that's, that's Isn't like that the cool? best thing you could hear. I know it's amazing. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so I think people will appreciate it the whole the whole show i mean it was an excellent episode as far as i'm concerned dude hell yeah i'm I'm, I'm pumped it. man I'm, it's an honor for me i love you deeply you're the favorite you're my favorite like i i guys seriously i'm not i'm not kidding around like i feel understood by you in, in a way that makes me feel less insane like That's, i like genuinely like I really appreciate that i appreciate that well i've always ha- you know uh, that's the thing it's like we haven't hung out or anything, but I've always felt like as soon as we talked, you're just one of those people. You meet them sometimes where you feel like you just know them. Mm-hmm. That's how I feel about you. It's like just like an old friend since the yeah. first since we first started talking. So the yeah. feeling is. I mutual. can't wait to see you're going to be a monster palooza. Are you? Yeah, hell yeah! You get a little booth and shit. You got a booth? I think yeah. I haven't gotten a booth since COVID. I just got out of the habit, and it's like I'm getting so old. It's so hard. Everything's so okay, old. No problem. You can come sit at my yeah, booth. Yeah, maybe I'll come and hang out, though. Maybe I'll come and t- come and see you. Sounds wonderful. But we should get together, though, regardless. Yeah, if I'll come down. down. I got to help you ship out all that stuff. <laughs> you, can paint, you can paint some of these. I would love I to come down and paint, and paint with you, dude. That'd be cool. <laughs> I love well, to well, learn. You, got, you definitely got to come over and uh, mm-hmm. and, and hang out and see, see my tiny little studio, meet the dogs, meet my wife and all that stuff. I would love to. Cool, man. Right. Well, okay, don't hang up, but the last thing we got to do is just say goodbye. So you just have to say goodbye to the audience in some special way. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you for putting up with another Skin Tensity brand episode. Uh, fun. Um, just do what feels innately right to you and do your best and don't get all mad and reactionary when somebody's mean and just understand that they're something bad probably happened to them so that's why they're acting like that and uh yeah i don't know um just i don't know man like just don't add to the bullshit of the world if possible yeah <laughs> <laughs> like just it's already fucked up man like just like i don't know just let fools be fools that's what my uh poetry teacher uh said to me in high school he took me aside he goes skinner you know what your problem is you just won't let fools be fools. That is a great, that's great advice. Yeah, and I was like, "What?" And he's like, "He's <laughs> fucking mad at everything all the time." He's like, "And I'm like, okay, okay, I'm sorry, Jesus." Okay. <laughs> that's great advice. Just let fools be fools. Just let fools be fools. I love that. That's yeah. a good. That's a good one to end on. All right. Well, thank you everybody for listening. Thank you, Skinner. Don't go away. Say uh, goodbye, everybody. Thank you. <laughs>